Hey viewers, welcome to Real Astrology and today is a very special day for me as a very um, renowned and a very uh, brilliant astrologer is uh, here as a guest from Exotic Astrology, a very uh, renowned channel again and it's an honor to have him over. Welcome Babaji to my channel and uh, thanks for gracing my channel by your presence. I'm really honored. Thanks so much for making time. Thank you very much for your invitation. I am honored to be in BL Astrology. <laughs> oh, so sweet. Thank you so much. And uh, today, um, Babajit is going to share with us his thoughts on uh, the great famous Manglik Dosh that people dread, that most of the people fear. And uh, he's going to throw some light on that, whether it is uh, uh, how impactful is the dosha when it is a dosha when it is named as a dosha definitely is a dosha so uh, what exactly is uh, this dosha about he will just explain everything over to you babaji the stage is all yours okay thank you very much once again so today we will discuss in short with some example charts on what actually is mangal dosh all right so to be very honest this is one of the hundreds and thousands and millions of doshas which are written in the astrology books all right so there's nothing to panic panic in a way that this yoga will destroy your marriage or it will kill the spouse or anything like that on the other hand there's another extreme to some astrologers especially today and especially in youtube and in so many other places in internet forums and online forums you'll see that they say oh this yoga is not acting only this is false actually you know there's no yoga like this that means they, they mean to say that, that that this yoga is completely wrong it's a uh, it's something which has been cooked up by the astrologers of today all right that is also the other extreme which is also not correct now what i want to sh share with uh, all of you today is that that is one of the placements and for those who are not aware of the topic manglik so manglik means any ways by which mars we know we all know what mars is as ma'am is also wearing red today <laughs> so mars represents see basically what mars is mars is our ability to stay single basically if you talk in context of marriage okay it's our ability to not go ahead with compromise with in compromise with others not not go ahead and stay in a deal in an agreement because it rules the first house of the natural zodiac so in that case uh, if it is ruling the first house we have to ensure that we are being ourselves we cannot just go on spending our energy on others then that is seventh house that's libra that's what venus is all about that is why when the time period of venus gets activated we always want to do things with others all right during venus dasha or venus mahadasha either way you call it and when time period of mars gets active we always feel inside that i will do it myself now that will depend on the placement of mars which planets are conjunct mars and which planets are aspecting and what is the dignity of mars okay which house it is 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 it in digbala in the 10th house or is it in the fourth house or is it in lagna or in trines whichever house it is all right so now when mars is placed in the first house the second house the fourth house the seventh house the eighth house and the twelfth house these houses as per the ascendant and some people also take it from moon and some people also take it for venus and there are some debates on which houses to take if it is from the moon which houses to take if it is from the uh, from from venus or from the lagna that i'll not go into that debate because everybody has their own uh, experiences upon which they say that no 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 we i do not take mars as manglik from this house from the moon so i will leave it to uh, the audience this regarding this debate but in my experience i have seen that when mars is in these houses one two four seven eight and twelve these six houses then there is a possibility of this yoga being activated okay now there are some people who say that if you take these houses it's like saying six houses among the twelve are giving you manglik dosh 
that means technically 50 percent of the people in this world they are mangliks all right so then they they make a joke out of this they say that oh nice 50 percent are manglik 50 percent are non manglik <laughs> okay so because of this they say that oh maybe the yoga doesn't work how can it be possible that half of the world is manglik well let's be very honest to most of the cases you will see you will see that they are mangliks and if you ask this question yourself we also have this tendency when we are in a relationship not not in a, a bond with somebody necessarily but even when uh, we are in a bond of friendship with somebody with a man or a woman anybody sometimes we have this tendency to force the other person to make things go our way all right that that is there inherently with everybody so when this tendency comes in marriage then that can cause some issues okay that can cause some friction but to say that oh my husband or my wife will die or if they say that if you marry if a non manglik marries a manglik person then the non manglik will die or they say sometimes the other ways also if a manglik marries the non manglik some astrologers say or oh, because you are manglik and she is non manglik the boy will die all right so that that is like saying when you say that what you are inherently saying is marriage is all in all in life okay <laughs> That means you are saying the seventh house is more powerful than the lagna. Seventh house is the house where the sun is setting. How how in the universe can it be more powerful than the lagna? So to say that somebody will die if you marry a manglik or non manglik if you are of the other category, that is like saying the only thing the person will do in life is marriage. My God, see the other houses. <laughs> there are so many houses. My God, twelve houses are there, and. To my experience, I have seen it depends on the astrologer's inherent consciousness and his or her level of spiritual awareness. Okay, because I have seen like uh, one day I was with one person and then he told me that there was a female astrologer. Okay, so that lady astrologer opened the chart of that person and then she said, oh my God, it seems your life has been terrible. And then <laughs> he was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> what is so bad in my horoscope that my entire life has been very very bad according to you he asked that lady astrologer and then she said oh my god i see your venus is conjunct sun mars and ketu you know so your life must have been terrible actually and then he was like <laughs> what about the other planets man there are there are <laughs> there are so many planets in astrology so if your focus is on venus then that's what you will see. You will open the chart and the first thing you see is, oh, Venus is afflicted. What about sun? What about moon? What about the ninth lord? These are most important planets. What about the lagna lord? You are not seeing. First see what the person is doing, right? Then you see what Venus is doing. <laughs> but uh, if uh, if your consciousness, if, the, if you go to an astrologer and his or her consciousness is by default negative or if he or she has seen many cases where there are uh, accidents which has happened in case of manglik marrying a non manglik then that person may generalize this dosha as this dosh works or doesn't work and there are other astrologers who say oh I have seen 100 charts where mangal dosh is there it doesn't work no so today what I will be doing is I will be showing with the help of some examples <coughs> that all of these charts are manglik charts okay <laughs> and some of them have married other partners or they are in a relationship with somebody who is also manglik and some of them are in a relationship with those people who are not manglik also okay now there are uh, before going to the examples i would like to uh, share something else so now some people say that uh, suppose a uh, mars is uh, placed in the seventh house like the classic example is given of a cancer ascendant Mars is placed in seventh house, and for a Cancer, if it is seventh house, it will be Capricorn. So, the sign of exaltation is Capricorn from Mars. So we know that yes. So, in that case, some people say that oh, because Mars is exalted, Mars will not cause any dosha. Or suppose you are a Libra lagna, and for you, Mars is in the seventh house, which means Mars is in Aries. Okay, or you are a Taurus lagna where Mars is in Scorpio. So these three houses. Mars will create something known as Ruchak Mahapurush Yoga. Yes, that yoga will be created. So for these three ascendants, if Mars is in the seventh house. So now some people will say that, oh, Mars is very strong here. 
that's why it will not create this yoga well it is not like that if mars is strong that means its ability to make you feel it straight is more strong all right that is what happens with people who have a very strong mars they can think that they, they think that i can do everything myself sometimes so it does not mean that if mars is exalted or it is in mool trikur or it is in own sign this dosh will not work it it is not like that okay at the same time there are other things you have to check like the placement of moon i will be showing you some charts here where where you will see because see uh, the moon is the mind so we need to check how the mind is and what are the planets which are affecting the mind because mars generally what what he does is he creates friction so you have to see the overall chart like which planets are associating with the ascendant and moon that is very 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 important so manglik dosh in my opinion is not a black and white thing oh he's manglik she's not mangli you can marry you can't marry it's not like that all right we have to see the whole chart and there are many charts where you will see that uh, the person has mahapurush yogas but they are not working why it's not that it is not working but there is not sufficient strength enough enough sufficient strength in the chart that can let this yoga work for example take the example of uh, hans mahapurush yoga when jupiter is in kendra in own sign or in exaltation then this yoga is formed but you will see many people who have hans mahapurush yoga but they are not doing uh, they are not spreading spiritual knowledge that's the blessing of hans mahapurush yoga that the person uh, spreads spiritual knowledge like nobody else does and this can the hans mahapurush yoga is best manifested when a person has a cancer lagna because then jupiter is not only in exaltation and it is also in digbal in the lagna but you will see many cancer ascendants who have jupiter in the first house it is also in digbal it is also in exaltation but then they are sometimes least interested in spirituality yes so you have to check the whole chart you have to check where is the lagna lord placed so sometimes if mars is creating friction there can be a tendency that i will break off this marriage all right i will not stay with you i will you are not fulfilling my expectations i am not fulfilling your expectations so let's part away it's not working but suppose you see that the lord of the lagna is very strong because the lagna lord's placement will give you ideals if the lagna lord is exalted you have very high ideals you stick to things which you commit should i repeat you will stick to those things which you commit have you seen people they will make resolutions but they don't <laughs> they don't follow and they say oh we just made it it was new year's time no but if the lagna lord is strong you will stick to your ideals see wherever the lagna lord is going you will you will focus there and if it is very well placed that means you are well situated there so whatever you say you do yeah i mean and whatever you do you say it's the other way around also so now if you see that the lagna lord is well placed okay then even if the person is mangli or in a very hard way then necessarily not that he will break the marriage because he has a because he he or she will have that feeling that i have uh, given commitment to somebody in front of fire or if you are a muslim then i mean through nikah or by if you are a christian then by marriage or whatever you call it whichever tradition you are irrespective of your religion you will see that that person will work to keep the marriage and if you see that the lagnesh is not very well placed then there is a fight that's it end of the story <laughs> as they say na love at first sight divorce at first fight something like that and then you also have to see planets like jupiter yes so now they will say that now here i am giving you all the things which you will hear in india and in internet in other places yes these are the things which you will hear and now the next thing which you will hear so much is that they say if jupiter is aspecting mars which is creating this mangal dosh then this yoga is nullified okay well uh, it's not exactly that this yoga gets nullified you cannot nullify any planet you understand that but when jupiter is aspecting what does it mean why why, why does it say that jupiter is like a uh, natural it is the greatest benefit why 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 does it say like that why do they say that whichever place jupiter is aspecting that place 
can or will have a lot of good things why why do they say that because wherever jupiter is aspecting there is a possibility that you change those areas by using your free will using spirituality that is why they say like that so if there is a person who is having no spiritual inquisitiveness he's just hovering on the material plane so in that case if jupiter is aspecting and you say that oh great you know jupiter is aspecting my mars my dost is nullified well that may not be the case <clears throat> on the other hand if you see that somebody is having daily spiritual practices into his or her life and then they are reading the scriptures they are they are well aware of scriptural facts and truths and they have seen how historic personalities they have still carried on with their married life even though there were so so much disturbances there were so many problems they were still sticking to it like the other day i was uh, reading about draupadi who we all know from the mahabharat that she was she was abused and we know that she that this vastraharan leela was there where lord krishna had protected her honor by giving her sari in an unlimited amount but there's something interesting one of my gurus he was telling me one day that in the entire mahabharat in the entire all the shlokas you take all the shlokas chapters all the cantos all the adhyayas you take there is no place <laughs> there is not a single place where she is blaming lord krishna or she is blaming yudhishthir maharaj there is no place where she insults yudhishthir Ma yudhishthir maharaj or she insults krishna oh krishna how could you do this there is no place where she accuses have you seen people accusing god and the universe universe is unfair to me you know universe did this to me <laughs> but she is one example where we see that she never accused anybody she just accepted that as her own karma and of course those who had insulted her eventually they met their dead end they were slaughtered of course so that was that was justice which was served to her but the thing is when we are aware of such personalities yes and we are aware of the truths of the scriptures that for example why in the universe do they say that in indian culture like uh, i was having a chat with a german girl one day long back i guess so she was asking me that why does it happen that in your culture <laughs> and this is a very interesting question which she asked which many indians also have in their mind but they don't think on this or even if they think the answer to this question they think is like oh it is just because of our culture so she said that in your culture i have read books and the contemporary scenario and things of the past also that <clears throat> suppose uh, you are like uh, you have ha, you you got married but uh, you are like you like the person but it's not like a very <laughs> rosy or you know very romantic or it's not like a very great experience or suppose even if you fight or you don't fight but it's like this tendency is there you stay with that person lifelong you do not <laughs> you do not break the marriage and you, you don't go out and search somebody else all right now if there is abuse or if the person is harming you that that's a separate story we are not saying regarding that but in general i am saying that are in india this thing is there are chala lo chal gaya chala lo that that tendency is there but have you ever asked whoever is watching this why that is there because the example is given in the scriptures that suppose you you take the example that suppose you are going on a train from this city to another city and you know that the journey is only for 2 hours all right and suppose the person sitting next to you in your berth is not a great person <laughs> that person is not very cooperative or that person is like irritating you sometimes or that person is like not very friendly to you suppose so what do you do that time do you just sit 2 hours and you are like are anyways it's 2 hours only let it go or you are like oh you are not cooperating with me i'll call i'll call the police i'll rip your skull off it is like that we generally don't do like that we 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 know this that the person will only stay with us for 2 hours or 3 hours or 4 hours or 12 hours depending on the distance and after some time we will go to our own way so i do not need to 
destroy my journey just by fighting or by going to the ticket collector oh i don't like this seat i want another seat <laughs> because the scriptures say at least in the vedic context that this material life which you are having now it is like an opportunity which is given to you to go close to god so that you do spiritual practices all right and when you are doing that if your relatives which include your mother father your wife your husband if they are not very cooperative also with you <laughs> so they are like the nearby passengers which you have in your seat they may be cooperative they may not be cooperative sometimes you may like them or you, you may not like them sometimes but that doesn't mean that you 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 waste your whole life trying to find uh, another person it's like saying i will find the uh, i will uh, waste all my time in the train just by finding the right passenger well maybe by that time you only get down yes <laughs> so that's what happens like people they say to me that oh it's been 48 years like now 58 years i have still not found my soulmate <laughs> <laughs> and i tell them even if you find your soulmate after 20 years 30 years when you are 70 or you are 80 you will leave yes after that what you will do so the point is that that is why this conception is there in uh, india and in the vedic culture that we stay with that person and these to know that this ideology is there with the person or not you, we have to see the whole chart okay we have to see the presence of jupiter and the presence of ninth lord is also very important and which planets are there in the ninth house they they strongly impact the belief system of somebody so if there are malefics in the ninth house i have seen and i am not talking of religion here or any specific uh, orientation i am saying in general beliefs so if the ninth house is very very badly afflicted then i have seen that these people they say that oh because i have given my word but it's okay i don't want to do it i will not do it because the nakshatra purva shada also comes in sagittarius sagittarius is the original ninth house and you will always see that uh, 15 december every year sun enters the sign of sagittarius okay and during new year time where is sun sun is in purva shada <laughs> during that time and purva shada is the nakshatra for resolutions and declarations so during new years everybody will make declarations i will lose weight i will go to the gym i'll do this i'll do that <laughs> but if there are afflictions to the ninth house then the person may not stick to what they believe or what they do they may they may be very uh, fluctuating in their beliefs today they believe that that person loves me tomorrow they say oh, that person doesn't love me so that is what i am stressing all the time that we have to check the whole chart first you have to check where is the flow of the chart going how is the person inherently a person inside after that you go to what is happening in seventh house what is happening with venus etc now the next thing i would like to say is that suppose somebody is not a mangalik depending on moon or mars or ascendant or venus whatever you say but if your seventh lord is badly placed then you might have struggles in marriage and then you will say oh this uh, they said that i am not mangli so you will not have problems in marriage but now i am having problems in marriage so then you will say oh see not only mangli those works non mangli people are also in trouble so please understand mangli simply means that your tendency to stay as an individual within a relationship or within a bond so that does not mean if you do not have that you will have a great marriage okay <laughs> you might have a good marriage but that 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 doesn't mean negation of manglik dosha does not mean that you have a married life which is free of any problems it's like a royal road cake walk it doesn't mean that okay so we have to study the whole chart and we have to see what is what is the person inclined to so for example in my case i have seen so many examples if the lord of the ascendant is in the 10th house specifically or it is in 6th house and there are too many planets in these two houses 6th house 10th house then the person is naturally inclined towards money and work and name fame status and career in life so for these people i have seen that their marriage goes to background sometimes and that can even create challenges their spouse may have an affair with somebody okay because they are not giving time to the spouse you see 
So because of that, that can happen. Now they may be Manglik, they may not be Manglik. So then you will say, oh, I was not Manglik, but why is my husband treating me like this? He doesn't come home, he's always outside. You, you or he may not be Manglik or non Manglik, but that's the inherent disposition of the person, you see. So if those things are there, so suppose now you are, uh, suppose you are a non Manglik. Okay, <laughs> because we get many charts where they say I'm Manglik, he's non Manglik, what will happen? So now suppose you are a non Manglik, okay, by all the means, and then you get a chart. Suppose you are from India, and in India, still the tradition of arranged marriage is, where, is still uh, surviving or sustaining to, to some extent. So then you get a chart of, uh, suppose you're a girl, and you get a chart of a man who is also a non Manglik, okay? So the rule is non Manglik will marry another non Manglik. And then you go to an astrologer and he says, oh, wow, both are non-Mangliks. Fantastic it is. Okay. And now suppose your, your to-be husband <laughs> or your husband has these placements. He has too many planets. At times I've seen even the 11th house. In 6th house, 10th house and the 11th house. He has too many planets there. He has like, suppose sometimes I've seen people having seven planets there in the 6th, 10th and 11th houses or five planets or six planets sometimes. Then you will be like, oh, I am very happy in married life. Only problem is my husband doesn't come home. You know, he's always in the office. He's always outside. So then you will say, oh, but uh, he was non, he was also a non manglik But why my marriage is not working? Well, that is what I am saying. <laughs> Just because you are not fighting inside marriage, it doesn't mean that you have a great marriage, right? So the other thing I would like to say is that the water signs they. They they try to enhance relationships, water signs, because Venus, the natural karaka for marriage, gets exalted in a water sign, which is the sign of Pisces. We all know that. So I have seen in my experiences that even if you are Mangli, and I will show you example charts, even if you are Mangli, and at the same time, if you have water signs prominent which means if you are ascendant or ascendant lord or sun moon if these four planets i mean not all of them but if some of them are in a water sign so suppose your moon is in scorpio or it's in pisces or it's in cancer because water is having that natural trait to encompass everything okay so these people are more accommodating they understand emotions more because most of the times, how Manglik dosha affects? It affects by anger, right? So suppose you are in a relationship with somebody who has moon in water signs or the ascendant or sun, sun not too much I have seen. If the ascendant lord or moon, these two planets I have seen, then suppose you get angry on them sometimes. So then that person will understand that this person inherently is not like this, but now temporarily because of anger, he or she is behaving like this. So they have a tendency to forgive. And then we also see Jupiter, as I said, Jupiter is the natural karaka for forgiveness. Because Lord Krishna says in Gita, Titikshai, that is like uh, this, this word forgiveness. May forgiveness, tolerance, yes, Shamo Damastapas Saucham, Shanti Rajava Mevacha. These are traits of a Brahmin. Brahmin is anybody who is having knowledge of the scriptures and who is spreading the knowledge of the scriptures. So he has that power to forgive others. So Jupiter and its placement will show how much forgiveness can you give to others. And Jupiter also gets exalted in a water sign. It gets exalted in Cancer. So Ju Venus gets exalted in Pisces, which is a water sign. Jupiter also gets exalted in Cancer, which is also a water sign. Okay, so these uh, these these signs are very important. So if if somebody has too many planets. In water signs, and even if they are a hardcore Manglik, I have seen hardcore Manglik means like if they are a Capricorn Lagna, Mars in first house, my god, it's like super Manglik. <laughs> then also, I have seen provided they have these other placements, the Manglik dosha is nullified to a very large extent, but it might still act. Now, the next thing is you have to check your dasha also. So, suppose you are getting terrorized that you are a Manglik and suppose your Mars Dasha is only never coming. <laughs> the Mars Dasha of Mars is never coming in your life. So then you don't have to worry. Okay. And at the same time, suppose you are a non-Manglik. All right. And your Mars Dasha is <laughs> on the line. <laughs> and provided 
Mars is connected to the Dusthana houses. Dusthana means 6, 8, 12. Connection means it is either sitting in 6, 8, 12 or it is lauding these three houses. All right. And suppose you are not Mangli. And you think that, oh, yes, I am non manglik so Mars Dasha will give no problems in marriage. Even then, you might encounter problems in marriage. Now, you may be thinking, why am I speaking of the plus and why am I speaking of the negative? Because you will see these questions flooded everywhere. Oh, I was not manglik my marriage broke. How, how in the universe? If, if Mars or that planet which is in Dasha, which has got activated, is linked to the sixth house, there will be challenges in marriage. Either you are Manglik or you are not Manglik. That's secondary. So just because I am telling again, just because you are a non-Manglik doesn't mean necessarily you will have a great marriage. Okay. And just because you are a Manglik, it doesn't mean that your marriage will fall. It might fall. It might fall due to other reasons. So suppose I've seen people whose fifth Lord is either in eighth or twelfth or the eighth Lord and the twelfth Lord or either of them is sitting in the fifth house. So if the combination is there related to five and eight and 12, then these people have too many affairs and these affairs can also be there after marriage, extramarital, right? It's like parallelly you are trying to step on two boats. So in that case, if you say that you are a monk, then it can happen that the current relationship you are ending with violence. You are either scolding your spouse, you're beating your spouse, you're doing something like that. Or suppose you are a non mangli then you might just say that, oh, I don't want to stay with you. <laughs> but ultimately, your marriage is breaking, right? If these combinations are there. So, or suppose you, you are very expert in a way that your spouse doesn't come to know that you are having affairs. <laughs> so that's what I was saying again and again. You need to check the whole chart and the inherent disposition of the person. Or does the person... Or what kind of a person he is or she is for, first of all. So whenever I get charts for matching compatibility, I first check that the, the, the paths are matching or not. Paths in the sense that if suppose one person is focusing on one area and one person is focusing on another area. So then I try to check that is there any way by which they can come to a common ground. And then you go on to other factors like, oh, that person is Manglik and this person is non Manglik. So those things are there. So now I will uh, share the screen and I will we show can, you some examples. Make, uh, make it into the uh, second part, the chart sharing. Okay. And so the, uh, the example charts will be shared in the next part. So stay mm -hmm. tuned, everyone. Om Tatsa.